Hello fellow riders, this is your host Rusty James. It is Thursday, March 10th, 2016, and this is The Ride. Off to work I go, off to work I go, time to make the bacon. It's off to work I go. I don't know why I just did that. I think it's because I grew up in a home that had music in it. I don't know if I told you about this. Oh, I think I did. I interviewed my father a while back. He's a folk music guy. And I have fond memories of him whipping out that guitar and just playing stuff. Man, I gotta I gotta I gotta get him to do that again. Takes me right back to my childhood. We would go to friends' houses, he'd bring his guitar, and he'd run through his catalog of funny old historical songs and and wherever we would go, whatever family we visited, seemed like the kids would really get into it. And I don't remember ever thinking, oh, not again, Dad. I don't, I don't remember that. I, I really enjoyed it. So thanks, Dad. I should probably learn how to do these songs, too, for my kids and my grandkids when that time comes. I'm traveling to work today, and I'm excited because I don't see any snow except for these ugly, dirty mounds that are still left at the side of the road in places. But I'm excited because we're going to get rain today. Now, I, normally I'm not a big fan of a rainy day. But I love a rainy night. Is that how it goes? Anyway, um, but something about rain that cleanses, especially now, now when you have all the salt on the road and all the dirt from the plows everywhere, and the grass is a lovely shade of yellowish brown, I know this, when the rain falls and starts washing things away and starts helping thaw through any remaining snow dirt hills it does a job of cleansing because what I'm really after isn't the rain what I'm after is the results of the rain the buds on the trees you know they're actually anticipating things I can see right now that there's maybe some buds starting to happen they're anticipating But nothing like that water to just wash away the gunk from winter. And then the grass starts to grow. That for me, that's the that's the one that really gets my soul happy. Seeing that grass turn from yellow dead to green and vibrant. So I know I need the rain to do that. And there's nothing like the springtime when things are starting to liven up and start living again it just does it just does my spirit good maybe it's just maybe it harkens back to this concept that though things for a season can go dormant new life can still spring forth And you can't tell me that you haven't had dormant times in your life because I know we all face them. Perhaps you're going through one right now. Can I be a reminder to you that God has your life in the palm of his hand and that he won't leave you, he will not forsake you. I wish I had the scripture that I was reading this morning my wife reminded me of a particular passage from Psalms that talked about just that that the Lord has your steps ordered and though and though you may fall he's there to lift you up and just like I was talking the other day about communication and just 
there's times in our life where we turn off the communication or we or we engage in behaviors that cause us to feel like we cannot communicate with the Lord or that we're not worthy of communicating with the Lord because look we made this mistake behold I stand at the door and knock his network port is always active waiting to receive information waiting to acknowledge your communication he never puts a block on his network port He's always willing to hear. Now, one thing that's interesting is that there are times that he will put a block on his blessing. Hmm. I don't know if I heard a bunch of people say preach it there, but he does. It's clear in his word that there are things that we do that will stop his blessing. So I wasn't going to go there, but, you know, as you find the word telling you certain things not to do you know and it'll say behold things will be good for you and things like that probably ought to pay attention to those things you know it's not fair for us to go cherry pick the gospel and find the things that we like about it and and quote those and use only those and then completely ignore the ones where he's saying you know you must avoid this or else I can't bless you in this way If you do that kind of stuff, no wonder people get into confusion and get into this, um, but God, why? Why why is this happening? I thought you were going to take care of me. Well, he wants to take care of you. He wants to keep you in health. But, you know, you got to put down the smokes. Just saying. Sorry, smokers. I know I pick on you a lot. You're an easy target. But just like that's a deliberate challenge to, to your body's health, other things are too. Anything that's kind of an addictive behavior, you got to watch it. Because it'll control you, and you won't have control over it. And if it has control over you, then the consequence is that God doesn't have full control. It's been given a priority over God in that area in your life. But let's look at the rain a minute. The rain is a picture. I'm going to draw a picture today of the Spirit of God falling down and helping to cleanse our life after a season of dormancy, if that's a word. A dormant season. You know, rain's cool because it goes just about wherever it wants to go, have you noticed? You know, I'm getting ready to build a chicken coop, and I can almost guarantee you that I can try to make that thing as watertight as I can, and I don't want to spend a million dollars doing it, but I'm sure that there's going to be a little bit of water infiltration because I'll miss something. Because water has this awesome ability to get in there and find its way. And just like it does in the natural, the Spirit of God, when He's pouring into your life, and you let him pour into your life, he will find those places. It's kind of the nature of the Spirit of God. He will find those places that we're trying to hide from him, that we're trying to keep from the from the the water, if you will, from the Spirit. But just like he stands at the door and knock and waits for you to open the door, these places, he's not going to go in there and clean them unless you say it's okay. Unless you give your life over to him in these areas. But he will find them. The spirit is all about truth. And he will find them and he will bring them to your attention. And then you got a deal. And you know how he brings them to your attention? Through people like me. Because right now you're thinking of it. (laughs) See how that worked? That scripture, though you fall, he's going to lift you up. So, okay, so you looked at that situation, you're thinking about that situation right now, and you're thinking, yeah, that's where I fall a lot. But God will lift you up. How does he lift you up? You constantly fall in this area. You constantly have these angry thoughts. You constantly have these self-depreciating thoughts. You have thoughts that you value yourself less than others. How can you do that? God values you higher than the angels 
So you ought not be doing that. God has placed you on a high place. He's given the land to you, by the way. He says, I'm going to set you here. Look about you. See that field? That's your inheritance. I'm getting chills thinking about it right now because some of you haven't thought about yourself that way, that you actually have an inheritance. You know, we've been adopted into the kingdom. We've been grafted into the vine of the family of God, which means that water from the Spirit is pouring into you because you've been grafted in. And he sets you on this high place and he says, look about you, this is your inheritance. He doesn't want you standing in the valley looking up at the sheer cliffs all around you thinking, I can't get out of here. It's all in your perspective. Your perspective could tell you, look at all of these cliffs around me. Look at the immensity, the mass of all this stuff leaning in on me, coming in on me, blocking me from the sunshine. I'm in this dark valley. I can't get out. I don't know how to get out. And God's saying, I will lift you up. I have placed you on this high place. I had a picture that a lot of times that valley we, we are in, you know how you got there? You didn't stumble and fall into it. You no, know, look behind you. There's a shovel there. You dug it in. You dug yourself into this thing. A lot of times, if we're honest, we helped put ourselves into this pit because we listened to the wrong voices. Yep, I'm worthless. Dig a pile. Yeah, I don't ever think I can get out of this situation that I've found myself in. Dig another pile. Well, that's just a pile of junk. Now, I know things happen to you that you have no control over. And I know it can be very frustrating at times. But what I'm getting at is a spiritual truth. The fact is, it's very easy for us to look at the things that are happening to us and we look at them with the wrong eyes and we see that those are all things that are against us. And we still dig the hole, spiritually speaking, and keep putting ourselves deeper and deeper into this valley. This is a cool picture. I've never really thought of it in this way. But God lifts you up. Oh, that's so good. You know why? Because, you know, we think a lot of times that we've got to we got to start filling in the hole. We got to fill in this valley on our own work, on our own. You know, we got to we got to pull ourselves up from the bootstraps. Got to make it happen. I'm just trudging through my day. Someday God'll come through for me. Come on. He will lift you up. Don't you think the creator of all, the one who knows the very hairs on your head, that he can't get you up on the place where you need to be, you don't have to work at it to get yourself out of the valley. You need to let the Holy Spirit reign into your life, expose those things, those thoughts, those things that had caused you to bury yourself in the first place. Let him, let him expose those things. Let the Holy Spirit, the gentle comforter, the gentle counselor, let you see the truth. The truth is, God has called you by your name. He knew your name when he was hanging on the cross, by the way. Ever think about that? He knew you when he was dying for you. Don't tell me you can't get out of the situation you're in. Don't even say it. You need to speak by faith. I will be placed outside of this valley because God will lift me up. God will lift you up. So let's not be looking at the walls of the pit that we happen to be in and seeing how oppressive those are. That's just reminding us of the old life, the life that God has rescued us from. Let him place you in a place of vision where you can see about you and where you can see the path ahead. God doesn't block your view from the next step. No, he illuminates it for you. His word is a lamp. He's not going to necessarily show you all 
500 miles that you've got to go, but he will illuminate your next step, which means he will give you a vision. He will give you a direction. If you don't know what you're supposed to do, all you need to do is just cling close to him. The closer you are to him, the better you can hear him, the better you can adopt his perspective. If you're getting out of a dormant period of your life and you're wanting that rain to just clean things away and you're wanting to hear the Spirit of the Lord in your life, the best thing you can do is just get closer to Him. I mean, you can acknowledge all of what I'm telling you mentally and intellectually and say, yes, I agree with you. But until you take that step of faith and say, well, you know, I am going to get closer to the Lord. I am wanting to hear His voice more. I am wanting to do things that I didn't want to do in the past. Because by faith, I believe I will hear something. I will see something. I will know something. I will take a step that I've never took before. This is the day. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to do that. We're going to pray. And if you're ready to get out of your dormant situation and, and let the Lord lift you up, we're going to do it right now, all right? Let's be in agreement. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come and speak to you. Many of us, Lord, are coming out of a period of depression or dormancy or lack of insight. Whatever it happens to be, Lord, we know that your word says that you lift us up and that you will never forsake us. So right now, we are acting by faith, believing that you are hearing this prayer and that you will, right now, set us in a place where we can see things clearer, where we can understand your heart better. We ask, Lord, that you will change our life, that you will pour your spirit into us in a brand new way. And if we've never spoken to you this way, we want to acknowledge that you are God of all, that you died on the cross, that Jesus Christ died on the cross and took the penalty for the sin that we commit. And he did that for us. And he offers this gift of salvation to us. We accept that right now and we ask that the Spirit of God will pour into our life and just cleanse our eyes, cleanse our heart, cleanse our thoughts, cleanse our motives. I thank you, Lord, that you know my name and you will help me see my future. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, everyone, that was powerful. Today was powerful. You know some people in your life that needed to hear that. I want you to forward this on to them. Promise me you'll do that. This isn't just for you and for me. This is for other people. So we need to spread the word. I want to thank you for listening, tuning in to The Ride. I pray that it's making a difference. I know that it's making a difference. So you stay in that word. You live in peace. And you pray for those who persecute you. And doggone it, God has everything for you. Let's not limit ourselves to just view all of our failures and mistakes. Why don't we look at God's successes in our life? Why don't we look at the things that He's already established for us and trust Him for the things that we have yet to see? Because you know what? Your future, my future, the future of everyone who calls Jesus their Lord is brighter than you could ever imagine. And I want you to acknowledge that and spread the word. Your future is brighter than you could ever imagine. And I will see you on the flip.